Welcome to this Day One Conversation. I'm Peter Wallace, and today we're honored to have with us the Most Reverend Catherine Jefferts Shorey, the 26th Presiding Bishop and Primate of the Episcopal Church. She is Chief Pastor of the Episcopal Church's 2.3 million members in approximately 7,500 congregations in 16 countries and 110 dioceses. As primate, she joins leaders of the other 38 Anglican provinces in consultation for global good and reconciliation. Bishop Jefford Shorey was elected in June of 2006 and was invested in November of that year. Before that, she served as Bishop of the Diocese of Nevada, having been elected in 2000. Bishop Catherine, thank you so much for being with us. It's a joy to be here. Thank you. Much has been written about the need for the church to involve more youth and young adults. How do you approach that task? It's a challenge, particularly in older congregations, because it usually implies the need to change in some ways. Mm -hmm. uh, congregations get comfortable with the ways they worship and with the people they sit by and the people they know, and inviting in younger people challenges all of that. One of the things that I'm really adamant about is the need for church bodies, um, individuals and communities to get outside their doors, to go out into the community and to meet people who don't turn up in their beautiful churches on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where we're going to meet the neighbors who are most hungry for healing, for, for the Word of God, for a word of hope in their lives. And it's likely to be in the athletic club or uh, on the soccer field or in the tavern on Friday night. And churches have not, at least in recent decades or centuries, had a great, a great deal of witness in that, those parts of life. Some have even said the church is an outmoded institution. What are some of the reasons you believe the church is needed today and in the future? Well, Christians can't be Christians all alone. Mm. Uh, they need the rest of the body. Uh, to support each other, uh, to uh, encourage in moments of and times of depression and loss and grief, uh, to remember that none of us can save ourselves alone, uh, that we depend on the community, that it is only together that we will be the healed and whole and holy body of Christ in this world. While we look at the future and what we as the church should be doing, it's also important to acknowledge mistakes in the past, which you did a few months ago at a special day of repentance in Philadelphia regarding racism, and particularly the church's role in justifying slavery based on scripture. Tell us about that experience and why it was important to do. It's exceedingly important. We really cannot begin to heal until we tell the truth hmm. about the sin, about the brokenness, about the illness within the body. The church, uh, like many other institutions in this country, uh, certainly participated in slavery, uh, profited from slavery, and failed to speak out about the sinfulness of slavery. For me, it was a, a journey of discovery. Uh, I grew up in a part of the country where black-white relationships were not um, of great import. The issues of racism had much more to do with Asians and mm. the presence of Asians in the community. So it's been a, a long journey of learning for me about discovering that slavery was present in the North uh, just as much as it was in the South until fairly late. That communities in the southern part of the United States effectively reinstituted slavery following the Civil War by the ways in which they changed their legal systems that many of the consequences continue to this day. For example, the over-representation of young black men in our prisons. Mm -hmm. And much of the Christian church used scripture to justify slavery. So what does that tell us about using scripture to support various positions on controversial issues? I would hope that it would tell us that we need to hold our judgments lightly. That God may be speaking in a way that we haven't yet heard mm -hmm. about a particular issue. We can look back in the church's history and see countless examples of this. We insisted in, this, in the Christian church for a long time that the sun went around the earth because of the way we read some passages in Joshua. Uh, it took a long time for Christians to recognize that that was 
flat out wrong. Uh, the church for a long time insisted that it wasn't terribly important to care for non-human creation, ignoring the fact that the first creation story in Genesis says that God creates all the rest of creation and it's good um, and ends up with human beings. Our ability to approach scripture with an open mind, uh, looking for what it is that God may be saying to us in this place and this day, means that we take scripture very seriously as the living word of God not the fixed and dead and final word of God decided centuries ago. Bishop Catherine, let's talk a bit about the spiritual life. What are the most meaningful ways that you encounter God personally? I certainly encounter God in the wonder of creation. That's been a theme throughout my life. Mm -hmm. the, the large uh, aspects of creation in the West, simply the, the bones of the earth, through the incredible diversity of the creatures on this earth. Uh, I encounter God in silence, in the wilderness. I encounter God in a mystical way, through unexpected encounters, wondrous encounters, awe-filled encounters. I meet God in my neighbors. Uh, in some who would be called strangers and some who are familiar. I meet God calling me into unexpected duties and roles. I meet God in the liturgy and worship on Sunday and other days in the, in the wonder of a people gathered to celebrate and to give thanks. When I'm, when I'm aware and awake, I meet God uh, continually. Hmm. Bishop Catherine Jefford Shorey, thanks so much for visiting with us. You're very welcome. Thank you. God bless.